My name is Natalie Geyer. Um, I'm a graduate student with the Oceanography Department and I've been working on my dissertation research studying the phytoplankton distribution in Apalachicola Bay, Florida, which is just about 90 miles south of here. And well, part of my research is to actually take water samples from the bay and examine them under the microscope to describe the actual phytoplankton community composition. And that's how I got my picture for this exhibit. It is a type of diatom that is found in the bay. Uh, diatom is a type of phytoplankton that has a glass um, shell, it's also called a frustule, and I will show you some of the samples and how we look at those. This is called an Udermol chamber. Um, we've settled out a known volume of sample that's been preserved um, to preserve the phytoplankton. So I poured the water out into the chamber and then let it settle for a day so all the dead phytoplankton seeps to the bottom and on the bottom is essentially a cover slip because this is an inverted microscope so whenever we look at things on this microscope we actually look at it from the bottom up so on this microscope the light comes from the top which is opposite the kind of conventional microscope and what's nice about this system is that there's a camera that sees into the microscope and we have computer software that we can actually view it. These are two examples of two diatoms, two different diatoms than were in my sample. And we can see another one here. There are a few small cells. And so essentially I go through the sample and I count and identify the different types of phytoplankton and then use that for community analysis. So I took the picture for this exhibit um, on the microscope from one of my samples. It was a diatom, uh, probably Cosinodiscus, is a large centric diatom. And some other specimens that I've also seen um, on the microscope and taken pictures of with uh, this camera system are a wide variety of dinoflagellates. Some of them are just so cool looking. So this would be something similar to what my picture is of. And this is kind of just an index of different phytoplankton um, in Apalachicola Bay that we use for our research, that I use for my research. So in Apalachicola Bay, we really care about the, the phytoplankton distribution because there's a lot of debate going on in the political side of things with the water wars. Um, so the Apalachicola River is fed by the Chattahoochee and the Flint Rivers, which go through Georgia and Alabama. So Georgia, Alabama, and Florida are all debating about who gets the water, um, and especially in drought years, this becomes a real uh, problem that there's not enough fresh water to go around between Atlanta, particularly the um, agriculture fields and irrigation, and how much fresh water is actually making it to the end point at Apalachicola Bay, where we worry about the oysters suffering from having too high of salinity, not enough fresh water. And this is really going to start getting at the other part of the story, the bottom of the food chain, what's happening with the phytoplankton that are a really important food source for the fish, the oysters, and you know, all the, the animals in the bay. And what we're worried about is that if there's not enough fresh water coming in the Apalachicola Bay, then we might see a reduction in phytoplankton biomass or a Kind of a shift in their distribution which could negatively affect the whole food web and then therefore the health of the system and even the economy in Apalachicola and the surrounding areas.